Welcome back to the channel. This is Trinity Storm, and you are watching 14th part of What If Naruto Mastered Ancient Shinobi Way. If you enjoy this video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Now, wasting no time, let's start the story. He hadn't shown such speed before, Pain reasoned, so he was just testing me. But why? I need to stall until Shinra Tensai returns. You have grown strong. Our master would be proud of you, Pain said, but it is still futile. Give up and allow me to bring peace. And then there were two, Naruto said, seemingly ignoring his pain before returning his focus to him, and soon there will be none. Don't be so arrogant, Pain said, you are only a human, and I am a god. A god? Naruto inquired, perplexed, god of what? Death, destruction, mayhem, war, or simply god of pain. Someone like you wouldn't understand, he said matter-of-factly, but just come quietly, your sacrifice will lead to peace. Naruto noticed some movement to his left as he said this. What he saw was the Naraka path of pain moving towards one of the downed bodies. Pain took advantage of Naruto's turn of the head to attack him with a black rod sprouting from beneath his cloak. Naruto appeared to be caught off guard at first, but he quickly defended himself by raising his weapon and blocking the weapon. It didn't stop there, as it appeared that Pain was holding out and was delivering strikes faster than Naruto had thought he was capable of. Naruto defended himself, and they appeared to be on equal footing for the time being, trading and blocking strikes that would have otherwise sliced or pierced the opponent. I'm not sure if my chakra is stronger than his, so I'm not sure if he can disrupt my chakra if I get pierced, Naruto reasoned. You are quite strong, Naruto, Pain complimented, it's a shame this is your end. Are you referring to your other body, which is about to attempt to resurrect one of your bodies? Pain was startled to see a hand reach out of the ground and pull the Naraka path beneath the ground. It's a good thing your Rinnegan isn't a Byakugan, Naruto said as a clone burst from the ground, dropping a number of the small black piercings that once adorned the Paz body, because from that last attack I learned two very important things. Pain seemed to ignore him as he looked around the battleground and noticed all the paths for the first time. They were all normal. None of them wore the Rinnegan or had piercings. Pulling out these little rods of yours is the quickest way to defeat you, Naruto said, holding one in his hands. It's not the easiest way, but if your chakra can't get to your puppets here, they're nothing more than corpses. Noticing the piece of metal in Naruto's hand, the god realm reached up to his nose and felt that one of his nose's black piercings had vanished. In surprise, the real Nagato widened his eyes. How was he able to pull it out in the middle of such an exchange? He wondered, a human chill running down his spine. That is, until he became aware of something. When he did, he smiled. Shinra Tensai had returned, and the battle was over. He'd show this stupid Jinshuriki what it's like to disobey God. You said you learned two things, Payne said, but you've only mentioned one so far. Tell me, what else have you learned that gives you such confidence? That's right, I did say I learned two things, though I'd love to know what makes you so confident as well, Naruto said, what I've learned doesn't make me confident, in fact, it makes me sad, and a tad bit more angry at you than I already am. Pain was patient. What I've learned is that you are not a ninja. No decent ninja would have fallen for such a simple trap, Naruto sighed, but now I think I understand a little bit better. That appeared to get under Pain's skin as he charged at Naruto. Naruto avoided the swing that would have taken off his head, but just as he was about to repeat his first swing, he heard two words. I am Shinra Tensai. The effects were immediate, sending him hurtling away at breakneck speeds and gouging up the earth with his body, creating a trench. My power has returned. Pain declared, and now you see, you never stood a chance. Come quietly, and this will all be over. 
Pain saw Naruto get up as the dust settled where he had stopped. His clothes were ripped, and he had numerous scratches and gashes on his body and face, but he still smiled. I've decided, he said as his smile faded, I think it's time we met. Sato Arashigrikar A lone woman approached Arashi's gate. Her lips were red, and her blue hair was tied back. She was dressed in a green fur-lined robe and had the gait of a strong and proud Kunoichi, probably a little arrogant. Her beautiful porcelain features, however, were marred by rage as she stalked up to the gate after overcoming the Jinjutsu barrier. She had just spent the entire morning dealing with the most tenacious Jinjutsu she had ever encountered. No matter how many times she broke it, it quickly reasserted itself, and to make matters worse, it was pathetically weak, and anyone with half a brain could tell they were in it, but that didn't make it any less persistent. To make matters worse, despite how weak it was, it was still subtle enough to fool even her for a while, and when she broke it, she always had the feeling that she was being watched, but when she tried to find out who was watching her, she found nothing. But the most frustrating part, the part that put her in such a foul mood, was that by the time she decided enough was enough and it wasn't worth the effort to continue, she was too far in and too lost to find her way out of the cursed forest. To say Gurren was in a bad mood when she finally arrived at Arashi's gates would be an understatement. She was furious, and someone was going to pay for this insult. Not even Orochimaru could have made such a fool of her. She walked straight up to the gate, ignoring the guards. As she attempted to enter the village, she was greeted by a white mask with a rather pleasant smile painted on its face. It didn't put her at ease, on the contrary, because for some reason, she felt anything but joy from the person wearing the mask, similar to how Orochimaru would watch his victim with pleasure. Right before he killed them. It made her sick and made her wary of the person in front of her. Unfortunately, a woman's rage knew no bounds, and despite her unease caused by the masked guards, it paled in comparison to her current bad mood, which the two guards confronting her was not improving. Get out of my way. I'm going to see your leader, she said as she made her way to the door. That didn't work because they still blocked her way. For what purpose do you want to see the Kanshisha? One of his partners inquired as he placed his hand on his weapon, ready for a confrontation with the clearly frustrated woman. I don't have time for this nonsense, she said, not wanting to waste any more time with obvious lapdogs. My business is my own, so get out of the way or I'll move you. As she spoke, Crystal began to form on her hands. Unfortunately, her rage blinded her to the fact that there were more than two gate guardians, as two more appeared behind her with weapons drawn, ready to take her down. Alright, if that's how you want it, I needed something to vent about, so I might as well start with you idiots. She made the first move, and the guards followed suit. Okay, that's enough, said a voice that was immediately recognized and paused by all parties. Danjo-sama, this woman said she wanted to see Kanshisha-sama, but when we asked why, she refused and then attacked, one of the guards reported, what are your orders? It's okay, I'll take it from here because I'm responsible for her being here, he said, motioning for Gurren to follow, I'll take full responsibility. Very well, this will be reported the guard said as another vanished in a blur. Very well, he said as he walked away from Gurren, and by the way, good job. He and Gurren were gone, but not before Gurren gave the guard a triumphant look. Despite the fact that she couldn't see his face, she was certain he had given her the equivalent of a death glare. Gurren silently followed Danjo as he led her through town after leaving the guards. When she looked around the town, something became abundantly clear to her. There was no ninja present. Sure, she saw a few, but when she compared it to other villages she'd visited, even the smaller, less important ones, the one thing they all had in common was that the ninja population was almost always on display. This caused her to frown, 
which was noticed by Danjo, who gave her a glance. He didn't ask her right away what it was, but continued walking until they reached the village's residential areas. This did not appear to soften her scowl, nor did it appear to reduce the smug look on her face that accompanied it. Danjo could tell what she was scowling at because of her smug expression. She thought they were weak, and Danjo couldn't blame her. After all, that was the exact setting Naruto had insisted on. He couldn't understand it or agree to it at first because, growing up in the Fuma clan, he had far too often tasted the bitter meal of weakness, which was why he had originally left the clan to pursue other things. But that's another story for another time. The truth was that the village was powerful and had a lot of potential to grow, especially with the way the academy and other things were run and taken care of, which scared him at times. Naruto's first training session with the Juryu had left an indelible impression on all of them. Gurren's frown deepened when she noticed him looking at her, especially when she saw the knowing smirk on his face and the shiver that followed. What's up with that look, and where are you taking me? She inquired. Oh, this look. Well, I couldn't help but notice your look, Gurren snorted, but that's not important, you'll learn better later. Then just tell me where we're going. We're going to holding, he said bluntly, making Gurren stiffen, don't worry, it's quite comfortable and spacious, but you won't be able to leave the village on your own. We're almost there. Gurren, on the other hand, didn't seem to understand anything as she rounded on him, her crystal ready to fight. You dare to trick me? She exclaimed. You invited me to this pitiful village full of wusses, and then you trick me into being captured, I will make you. Was this the gifted and elusive ninja you mentioned? Danjo gave a nod. Gurin cursed herself for not noticing someone had crept up behind her. It was a hopeless situation. She shifted her gaze to the masked face of a ninja who appeared to be in his early twenties or late teens. He, like Kakashi, wore a face mask and exuded the air of a seasoned professional. What irritated Gurren the most was his expression of utter boredom and disinterest. The earlier remark about being rare and talented was clearly sarcastic. If there was one thing Gurren despised, it was people looking down on her, especially those from a small village like this. She doesn't seem to want to be here, the mysterious man said, Perhaps you wasted your time, Danjo san. Kanshisha sama would not want his time wasted by a useless ninja like this. That was the breaking point. You bastard, Gurren growled as she charged him with her forearm mounted crystal weapon, you will pay for those words. The masked man simply stared at her, no contempt in his eyes, before blurring out of her line of sight and punching her in the gut so hard that she collapsed and passed out. Jeez Itachi, Danjo, the vagabond, said, palming his face, must you be so rough? Sometimes I wonder if your real talent isn't in the ninja arts, but in annoyance. The use of words is also a part of the ninja arts. It couldn't be helped if she's so easily angered and goaded, Itachi explained as he smilingly picked her up, she's just as easy to manipulate as my younger brother. Ah oh yes, Sasuke. How is that going? Danjo laughed as he walked into an open gate that led to a sprawling and luxurious looking mansion. Last I heard he is either asking for you or Naruto. The mansion, also known as Level Zero Holding, was a luxury resort built to house high-ranking and dangerous dignitaries such as cages and powerful ninja who were not openly in conflict or on diplomatic missions. It was a safe haven that, while it appeared to be nothing more than a very fancy mansion on the outside, was actually quite secure. Of course, high-level ninjas would be aware of this, but they would comprehend it. No one would be foolish enough to let a potential enemy into their village unsupervised, no matter how friendly and no matter the circumstances. And this was the pinnacle of the cage trap. Itachi didn't respond other than a small upward twitch of his lips, as he walked into the mansion, amidst the looks of the lounging guests, 
who immediately recognized the unconscious woman as one of Orochimaru's top and most loyal subordinates. Many of them took an instant dislike to the now defenseless woman and began planning. After all, with the exception of the Konoha contingent who were staying as guests, everyone else was an ex-Auto member. You should talk to him, Danjo said as they opened the door to Gurren's room, because he is your brother. And what should I say? Itachi asked rhetorically, I made him hate me and destroyed his life. He doesn't need me in it anymore. He and I now walk separate paths. Really? You talk as if he hates you enough to kill you, Itachi scoffed, but the point is, he wants answers, and you and Naruto are the only people who can provide them and keep him from becoming what everyone once thought you were. This appeared to catch Itachi off guard as they left the room to allow an unremarkable looking woman in the room to investigate the new visitor. Itachi exhaled a sigh. Naruto had said something similar, but Itachi would admit that he was afraid of meeting his younger brother, but after hearing what Danjo said, he realized that he had to swallow those fears. Despite your appearance, you are probably the most perceptive man I know, he said, referring to Danjo's appearance. Yes, I agree, it is time we meet, Payne said, extending a black rod from his coat, unfortunately, our meeting will not last long. That's too bad. I was hoping to have a pleasant conversation with you because we were both trained by the same master. As Naruto channeled his wind chakra into his kanai, the effect of the senjutsu chakra caused it to extend about a foot from the tip of the blade. Pain raised his rod and pointed it at Naruto, who crouched to a more compact stance with his left side facing Pain. Naruto knew that the recurrence of that power meant he had to be more cautious because Pain had an invisible third hand with which he could strike at any time. However, thanks to Katsuyu's knowledge, he was able to discover the window of opportunity that existed after each use of the technique. Come, Pain. Let me see the power of a god, Naruto said, his humor gone and his eyes dangerously fixed on Pain. Come, so that I can show you for the demon you truly are. Fortunately, Payne said, you will not live to regret those words. Meanwhile, everyone was holding their breath as they watched from the walls of Konoha. Even at such a great distance, the tension between the two warriors could be felt. Even the wind had stopped moving as they waited for the other to make the first, and possibly final, move. Fukasaku couldn't help but smile as he heard Naruto's words, which were lip-read by the Hayuga who was relaying the fight's details to those who couldn't see. What could he possibly do now, Tsunade-sama? Pain's Shinra Tensai has returned? He inquired. It's impossible for him to beat that technique, and even if he could, the window is far too small. Tsunade had no response for him but the look on Fukasaku's face told her that he knew something they didn't. Fukasaku-sama? What do you think will happen? She inquired. You will see, and pay close attention, he said, Naruto-chan is low on sage chakra, but Pain appears to have the advantage. Unfortunately for Pain, Naruto-chan appears to have more than brute power on his side. He is no fool. That stance and the length of that blade of wind indicate that if I use Shinra Tensai, he will keep his balance and be ready for me, Pain reasoned. Pain then passed through some hand seals and unleashed a jutsu punching the ground, which was not the jutsu Naruto was expecting. Bakusu Shuha Sweden A massive torrent of crushing water slammed into Naruto. Shit, Naruto yelled. He had heard how all the paths of pain only used one power and that this one had some kind of gravity control, so he had prepared himself defensively, but he did not expect pain to use anything other than gravity techniques, let alone something this large. However, despite being caught off guard, he was not caught flat-footed. If he had been, his master would be rolling in his grave and haunting his sleep if he didn't die. Kazunami no Jutsu, Futen 
Naruto performed a rapid series of seals before directing hurricane force winds in the shape of a wave directly at the advancing torrent. When the water collided with the wind, it was as if a great hurricane had spontaneously occurred as the collision of the two powerful techniques tore up trees, moved boulders, and flooded everything in the constantly sinking crater that Naruto and Pain were creating with their fight. It was so great that even those on the wall still observing had to hold on with chakra and to each other to avoid being blown away. Unfortunately, they could do nothing about it. Pain. Despite having difficulty with the clash of techniques, wasted no time in extending the black rod from under his sleeves and preparing to finish it quickly because he knew that this was quickly getting out of hand, and if it got any further, he would have to use that technique. Naruto, on the other hand, was not waiting around, because as the technique faded and before he could feel pain, he performed another series of hand seals, causing all the water to swirl and move towards his outstretched hand. Pain was about to release his jutsu when he noticed all the water in Naruto's hands forming a sphere. A massive construct of water that moved and swirled around like a slow Rasengan. Mizu Bakudan no Jutsu, Sweden. He tossed the globe of water in agony as he said this. Recognizing that the sheer size of the technique left no room for him to avoid it, he did the only thing he could. Shinra Tensai The water bomb exploded, but none of it touched pain as it created a thin spray of water. However, Naruto expected or hoped that pain would defend himself in some way, and as he had tossed the jutsu, he ran behind it in its wake. Unfortunately for Naruto, the god realm was ready for Naruto to take advantage of the situation. He had underestimated him before, and lost five of the six paths fairly easily, so he would not take any chances. This is it, the pain said. Naruto's pupils dilated. I am Shinra Tensai. Naruto was blasted away from him and tumbled end over end for a long distance on the new lake they had created before coming to a stop on dry land, with pain following quickly, fearing that he would get up and hoping to stop him in time. However, just as he was about to seal his victory by driving one of his rods into Naruto to distort his chakra, Naruto's hands shot up and grabbed the black rod, surprising pain with his strength despite the fact that the markings of sage technique had already worn off. You've already lost, pain said, it's too late. Naruto smiled and stood up, still holding the rod in his hand. Have I? Naruto said, revealing his other hand was in a half ram seal. Pain let go of the rod and attempted to flee, but noticed that his movements were sluggish and that the blonde-haired boy was not pursuing, and he noticed that there were tiny sparks of electricity clinging to his body. Such petty tricks won't work on me, Shinra Tensai, he said. The technique did its job and repelled the technique. However, he noticed that it was far weaker than it should have been. Futen. Bakuha Arakazi. Pain, or rather the real body, had no idea what happened next, but the next thing he knew, the body of the god suddenly stiffened before all the places where the piercings were, seemingly explode. No, not explode. The piercings themselves seemed to have been sucked out of his body, causing the god realm to lose all function and collapse. The eyes, however, remained functional, as he saw Naruto slowly walk up to him with a few. It was exactly as I predicted, Naruto said as he dropped the piercings to the ground, removing these was the best way to defeat you. As he knelt next to Pain's body, Naruto began to remove the last few piercings on the god realm's face. Now, don't go anywhere, Naruto said, turning his head to look away. Us brothers need to talk, he added. He then removed the final piercing ad causing the god realm's eyes to lose their rinnegan. When the last piercing was removed from the god realm's body, the sheer intensity of the fight and the emerging victor had left them all speechless. He had defeated a foe that had nearly wiped them all out, and as some of the higher-ups discussed, a foe that didn't even have to physically be present to rain down his destruction. Tsunade-sama, we have a possible location, Inoichi said, 
with a few other Junin standing behind him, awaiting Tsunade's order. Tsunade, who stood next to the two toad elders, only looked on as the victor walked towards them. He was worn, but not to the point of collapsing. Maybe just a short break and he would be fine again. His clothes would not be the same, but that was nothing. Tsunade-sama, she heard her name and snapped out of her reverie, what are your orders? What? We figured out where he might be. Should we go after him? Inoichi inquired. Before Tsunade could begin, she felt a shift in the wind and a hand on her shoulder, and she turned to see who it was, only to discover that it was Naruto who had arrived via Shunshin. I'm sorry about this, but I'll have to request that you not send your men after him, Naruto said solemnly. So you're saying that bastard destroyed our homes and you want us to let him go? You're a fool for saying that, and an even bigger fool for thinking we'll, said one of the ninja with Inoichi. Enough. I will not have you insult this man who has just saved all of our lives, yelled Tsunade. He is Arashi's Konshisha and did not have to do this. The men bowed their heads in shame, but before they could say anything else, Naruto spoke up. It's okay, Hokage Dono, these men have lost a lot today, it's only natural that emotions would be high, Naruto said, understanding their anguish. Naruto's words felt like a ray of sunlight after a dark day to everyone who heard them, but he had more to say. However, I would appreciate it if you all did not go looking for him, he said, regaining his hard edge. I'm afraid I can't let that happen, Naruto, Tsunade said, what happened here today can't go unanswered. I understand, but I am not suggesting letting him go, Naruto said, and seeing the puzzled looks on the people's faces, he elaborated, this man was a student of Jiraiya Shisho, and it is my duty to meet and speak with him as his last student. Would you like to speak with him? Are you insane? Tsunade asked, perplexed. Naruto laughed at that. That's up to you, he said before turning to the old toad and saying, Fukasaku-sama, I'm going to use the last one. I hope Naruto-chan knows what you're doing, he said. The toad took the large scroll Naruto had brought with them and summoned a cage bunshin in a meditative pose with sage markings on it, which Naruto dispelled as the markings appeared on him. Before you leave, his address is. There's no need, he replied, I already know where he is. And with that, he was gone in a blur. Hanada, I've noticed a lot of intakes in your village, the one-eyed Junin observed. Kakashi, Sasuke, and Sakura were sitting in a lounge with Hanada and Jugo. Hanada sat cross-legged in a comfortable single chair similar to the ones everyone else was sitting in. Jugo felt uneasy for some reason, while Sasuke sat impatiently on his chair. Sakura also felt uneasy considering the company she was in. Ah, please don't be concerned, she said, everyone needs a home and we are simply providing one. Sasuke scoffed, and Kakashi was about to reprimand him when Hanada beat him. Do you want to say something, Sasuke? Hanada inquired. Sasuke simply turned his head, as if he didn't recognize her. I have nothing to say to you, he explained, I am only here for one reason, too. To see Naruto, Hanada finished, Sasuke's eyes narrowing at her, yes, I am well aware of that, but until she returns, you will have to stay here until he does. I'm sure you like the accommodations. As she said this, a ninja entered politely and whispered something in her ear, but Sasuke simply grunted and returned to staring out the window. I don't understand, Sakura said abruptly, and after realizing what she had done, she continued, sorry but he is so disrespectful, and yet you would accommodate him. It doesn't make sense. If it were any other village, they'd be after his blood by now. I know, Hanada said calmly, but you see, Naruto-kun has been expecting him, so I must insist you all stay until he returns? This seemed to perk up Sasuke. 
Was that what the ninja was saying? Kakashi inquired. No, but since you brought it up, I have some very bad news, everyone held their breath. Konoha has just been attacked by Akatsuki and is requesting assistance. What happened, how could this have happened? Do you know how bad it is? Kakashi exclaimed to himself. Information is still coming in, but there has been massive loss of life and great destruction thus far. Hanada could see worry and panic written all over their faces, almost all of them. Are you going to send assistance? Sakura inquired. Hanada was about to respond to that question when Sasuke interrupted with his own. HN, so who was powerful enough to bring a whole hidden village to its knees like that? Hanada sighed at his lack of tact, especially considering the looks he was getting from Sakura. The one who attacked was Pain, she explained, surprising everyone in the room, and no, we will not be sending assistance. What and why? I know Konoha hasn't been kind to you or Naruto, but that's no reason to abandon us like this, Sakura said, becoming emotional. Sakura stood up and walked to the door in response. What are you doing? Hanada inquired. If you won't help despite being our allies, Sakura said, I really want you to forgive me, but if this is the price of your forgiveness, I don't think I can afford it. We forgave you a long time ago, Sakura, Hanada said. Then why are you deserting us? Please, even if it's just one team, Sakura begged. Hanada groaned. I wanted to keep his a surprise, but I suppose now is as good a time as any. Kakashi, who had been sitting silently listening and analyzing, finally spoke. You're not sending anyone because you don't believe there's a need, Hanada replied, smiling, so, who is it, one of those Juryu? Hanada laughed softly at this. I guess you found me out, Hataka-san, you were absolutely correct, she said as a medic entered and gave her a message, causing her to turn to the medic as if he had horns. Something very urgent has occurred, and I must leave you, she explained, but the person currently assisting Konoha is Naruto-kun. You don't have to take my word for it, but with him present, and thanks to the information you've uncovered, this pain person may have chosen a fight he can't win. Please excuse me while Jugo entertains our guests. Hanada then exited the room, leaving a stunned audience. Sasuke rose from his seat and was about to leave when he heard Kakashi's voice. I hope you're not planning on returning to Konoha just to meet him, Sasuke? And what if I am? Sasuke scowled over his shoulder, I don't want the only person who could give me a straight answer to die before I find out what I need to know. Sasuke-kun, you idiot, Sakura said, can't you see that she said we couldn't leave because he'd be here soon enough? If you return to Konoha, you will miss your selfish opportunity. This prompted Sasuke to cast a dark glance at Sakura, which she returned with equal force. Ma ma, no need for that, we're a team for now, and since we have nothing to do, let's enjoy ourselves, he said, giving them a glare that made both of them nervous, well, Jugo was it? What do you guys do for fun around here? Jugo, despite being a mountain of a teenager, gently led them out, Sakura and Sasuke trailing behind. How Kakashi was able to glare at both of them at the same time with only one eye as they stood on opposite sides of him would remain a mystery to the two, as would how his face truly looked. Hanada raced to the hospital as quickly as she could with the medic in tow. How long has this been going on? She inquired. I was dispatched to notify you as soon as it happened, Hanada-sama. We may not have much time, she said as she increased her speed, if he gets loose, who knows what might happen. When she arrived at the hospital, she ignored all the bows of respect and other medics approaching her and made a beeline for the secret room that housed one of the most dangerous shinobi alive, and alive was a stretch because they hadn't expected him to be up so soon. As she was about to open the door, someone flew through it, colliding with the wall. I told you idiots already, 
This is an emergency. I need to warn Konoha and Arashi about pain, he said dangerously. If you don't get out of my way little girl, I'm going to have to move you like I did that guy, and I really don't want to hurt a pretty little thing like you. Again, I must insist that you stay, the doctor said, you just awoke from a coma, and you shouldn't be exerting yourself. Looks like you've left me with no choice, he said, narrowing his eyes, Ninpo, Hari. Before he could cast his jutsu, the dripping IV tubes on the floor sprang to life, grabbed him around the throat, and yanked him back onto the bed. What in the world is going on? He exclaimed. I'm sorry for the rough treatment, Jiraiya-sama, Hanada said as she entered the room, noticing all the downed ninja, but you're injuring too many of our ninja, and for someone who's supposed to be dead, you're making too much noise. Hanada? But then that means this is. Jiraiya inquired as he noticed the girl's approach. That's right, Jiraiya-sama, this is Arashigakure, and you have nothing to worry about. We were able to discover Pain's secret thanks to your information. At first glance, it appeared to be no different from the other spectacularly large trees that made up the forests that surrounded Konoha, but closer inspection revealed the difference. For one thing, even though it was brown, it appeared flaky, and upon closer inspection, it was discovered that this particular tree was not a tree at all. It was entirely made of paper. Naruto discovered this while following the chakra to its source. He walked into the building, parting the paper like a curtain. Inside was dark and devoid of all things, and that's where he discovered them. One was a strikingly sharp-eyed woman with blue hair adorned with an origami flower, though the color of her hair was difficult to notice in the dim light. She stood protectively next to a strange structure with a man sticking out of the top, dressed in her usual Akatsuki robe. She was about to attack when Naruto entered. Wait Conan, the strange things man said, he came all this way on his own to talk, the least we could do is listen before we capture him. The woman relaxed slightly as a result of this. She was still ready to strike at any time. The man, on the other hand, did not appear to be in any condition to fight. His hair was blood red and hung lifelessly from his head to just past his chin. It would have covered most of his face if it hadn't parted to reveal a Rinnegan eye that seemed to stare at Naruto with such intensity that it made the man's emaciated physique seem insignificant. He resembled a living skeleton, or a man dying of starvation just before the Shinigami claimed him. Hum, for someone who calls himself a god, you are far less than I would have expected. But, for the time being, your words are truthful. The man did not smile or change his expression. Conan, on the other hand, wore a frown. But judging an enemy solely based on his appearance is usually the quickest way to die, Naruto said as he approached the two, that is basic knowledge for a ninja, but I suppose it's not something that a person like you would understand. If that's all you had to say, I think you squandered your time. As the man spoke, a black object resembling an arrow yelled from the device he was mounted on at Naruto. Naruto, on the other hand, didn't seem to mind as he swatted it out of the air. Pain and Kona looked at Naruto in disbelief. That was unexpected, he admitted before sighing, what do you really want, why are you doing this? Why, you might ask. My response will make no difference, he said but since you're here to talk, perhaps. Then please proceed. Naruto was upbeat. Naruto sat on the floor of the enclosure, looking up at the redhead, as all traces of his sage mode vanished. He acts so casually, Conan observed as she observed his behavior, he is either a fool or overconfident in his own abilities. He had completed the six paths, so it had to be the latter, but he did have that strange chakra Nagato mentioned. Conan couldn't decide whether he was overconfident or a fool in the end. My goal is something not even Jiraiya could achieve, he said, his gaze locked on Naruto and Nagato, through justice, I will bring peace. 
Payne said those words in a way that fit his self-imposed role as a god and made one completely disregard the fact that the man probably couldn't stand on his own. Despite the heavy atmosphere, laughter began to permeate. It began with a small scoff, then a chuckle, and then it grew until Naruto's head was thrown back and he held his stomach with mirth. I didn't think I said anything amusing, Pain squinted at the Jinchuriki. Of course you did, said Naruto, you stated that you intend to bring about peace through justice. Justice can never bring about peace. It only breeds hatred and distrust. Even if it did, do you believe your actions today were just? You murdered our master, raised Konoha, and even killed friends and loved ones I still had in this village. How could that be justice, and more importantly, how could that ever lead to peace? What about the Konoha people, their peace and justice? Conan felt weak in the knees for a moment as a result of the force in his voice. The seamless transition of his words from jovial to angry left her befuddled as to what would happen next. She had no idea whether he would attack or not. Even if she could, her body didn't know how to react. She couldn't tell by looking into his eyes. While most ninja hid their emotions and true feelings by telling lies and hiding them behind stone faces, he hid his in obscurity and within illusions. To know what he truly thought and felt was both terrifying and seductive, to know but not know what his intense gaze meant. Maybe that's what he meant when he said Nagato wasn't a ninja. She would have asked if it had been anyone else, but Nagato was on another level, and this boy, as unremarkable as he appeared, walked away from a fight with six beings that destroyed an entire village without incident. No, she would not get involved. What do you want then? Nagato inquired, but received no response, my friends, family, and village were all destroyed as well. Do you really believe that only the ninja of Konoha have the authority to speak of justice and peace? Pain was not at all intimidated by the boy in front of him, but even though he knew it was pointless and that he should just get on with capturing him, especially now that his guard appeared to be down, he was going out of his way to try and justify his goals and methods of bringing peace to this boy. Perhaps it was the presence of a fellow student, or perhaps he was subconsciously afraid of this person. Whatever it was, it didn't matter now. Hum. I suppose you have a point there, Naruto said, returning to a less serious expression, as if he were in his own world. If I recall correctly, wars among the Great Five have always been fought in the smaller countries. Naruto then appeared to regain his concentration. I understand where you're coming from, Naruto explained. Yes, everyone feels the pain of loss the same way, we both know that pain, Nagato said, spotting an opportunity to dominate the conversation and drive his point home, but if revenge is called justice, then that justice breeds more revenge and becomes a chain of hatred. Naruto listened intently as Nagato spoke, as if analyzing everything that came out of his mouth. Living within it, knowing the past, predicting the future. That is what it means to know history, he went on to say, we can't help but believe that people will never understand one another. Hatred rules the ninja world. As Nagato spoke, Naruto frowned as he remembered the words of both his masters. How would you confront this hatred in order to foster peace? Naruto's frown deepened as pain inquired, let me hear your answer. Naruto's frown deepened and he closed his eyes in response. I see, Nagato observed, I created Akatsuki to break the cycle of hatred. I can do it. Why that's I need the power of the Nine Tails. I intend to use it to create a far greater power, capable of destroying an entire nation. Naruto's eyes widened in surprise as he heard this. What? The world will know true pain, and the fear of that pain will put an end to war, he said, adding that it would lead to stability and peace. That is not peace. It is only a lie. A fool shielding his senses from the stench of combat, deluding himself into thinking he had only found quiet, when in fact he had only found peace. 
I am no fool, people are stupid, he said casually, as if it were obvious, there will be no peace unless I do this. Time will pass, and the pain will subside. The checkmate's power will eventually wane, and people will start fighting again. They will use the weapon themselves this time, and there will be no true pain. Then, for a brief moment, there will be peace. Within this never-ending chain of hatred, it will give birth to brief periods of peace. That is my desire. He remained silent after his rant, observing the young man. Naruto had listened intently to what Pain was saying, almost convincing Nagato that Naruto was indeed convinced. However, a small sad smile spread across his face, and he stood up to dust his clothes. You are a fool, he admitted. And I'm guessing you have a better idea? Then tell me, how will you stop the cycle of hatred? Mocked Nagato. What makes it interesting to you? You may have the ability to use chakra, you may have unique jutsu, you may have also been trained under a legendary ninja, but clearly you are no ninja, so why should you bother yourself with ninja world affairs, aren't you just trying to assert yourself in places where you don't belong? Naruto countered. How dare you, Conan exclaimed, who gave you the authority to say something like that? It doesn't matter if we're ninja or not. The end result is the same, everyone gets involved. Enough, Conan, Payne exclaimed, allow him no access to you. Clearly, talking appears to be pointless. Naruto extended his hands as Pain prepared to attack. Don't you want to know what I said? The pain subsided. Do you mean to say you have a solution to the never-ending chain of hatred? What nonsense, but before I capture you, he joked, let me hear this. Not exactly, Naruto replied. Pain simply fired another of his rods at the boy after he said this. Instead of batting it away, Naruto was too close and took it in the chest this time. Your role is to be the sacrifice that brings peace, and this close, I could easily control you with my chakra, Nagato explained, the injury is not fatal. You are very important to me as the host. The air became heavy as what appeared to be a chakra tail emerged from Naruto's tailbone. When Nagato looked into his eyes, they were purple with slitted pupils, and it vanished as quickly as it appeared as he pulled the rod out. How could he stand up to Nagato's chakra so close? Conan inquired. Was it on purpose? Nagato questioned himself. You know, Naruto admitted, it's very difficult not to hate you. There was only the cold, unfeeling supreme ninja that Master Kiyosh and Jiraiya of the Sanin created as he said this. However, with everything you've said, I'm more confused than ever. And how come? Nagato inquired cautiously. We're both students of the same master, so how did you come up with this? Naruto inquired, I don't even know who you are. Before I respond, I'd like to hear your story. Very well, Payne said, surprised that the boy did not attack despite receiving a wound, I'll show you real pain. Nagato, that's just wasting time, Conan grumbled, are you sure we should? Wait Conan, Nagato said, I'd like to hear his response. My parents' death is one of my two major sources of grief. The night his parents died, Payne began telling his story about himself during the war. Whether by coincidence or not, his parents were killed by Konoha Shinobi. A case of mistaken identity. Nagato got his revenge on them quickly, as his Rinnegan were awakened in a fit of rage and anguish, and the next thing he knew, they were dead. He then moved on to the dog he had befriended shortly before meeting Yahiko and Conan. They saved his life when he was on the verge of death. They became fast friends after that, doing whatever it took to survive because things were tough at the time, especially for orphan children. However, their lives were altered the day they met the Sanin. 
Yahiko desired to learn ninjutsu so that he could not only fight and survive, but also put an end to all wars, so they pursued the three in the hopes that they would teach them. Jiraiya offered to look after them, saying it was the least he could do in light of what had happened. Things were going well until Nagato used his Rinnegan to kill a lone ninja, prompting Jiraiya to begin their training in earnest. He left after three years, when they had grown sufficiently strong. They parted on a bittersweet note, but they quickly moved on and formed their own renowned gang. They were so well liked that even Hanzo was wary of them. They were betrayed, however, by Hanzo, who had called for the union of the two factions. He had joined forces with Danzo in a self-serving mutual agreement. The death of Yahiko, who had sacrificed himself to save Conan, was the second source of Nagato's pain on that day. So many friends were lost in battle after that. So many people kept dying, he lamented. Everyone in the land of fire preaches peace, but with each mission they undertake, they fund the war. The big country's peace is built on the sacrifices of the smaller countries. People cause harm to one another without even realizing it. Hatred will exist as long as people do. There can be no peace in this cursed land, and what Jiraiya described was a fantasy. Nagato had finished his rant and had finally gotten to the point of it all. Now that you've heard my story, he said, let me hear your response. Despite this, Nagato's expression clearly indicated that he did not expect Naruto to have one. Naruto took a small book from his bag. Despite its apparent age, it appears to have been well maintained. It had a simple design, with only a border around the edges and the title written in simple lettering on the front. I was wrong, you are not a fool, Naruto said, a smug smile on Nagato's face, you are a selfish, immature, and cowardly, fool. Nagato's smug expression had vanished. Everything you said was tainted and destroyed. You say you will bring peace, but you start a war, you criticize the larger nations for having peace as a result of the suffering of the smaller countries, but you do the same thing only on a larger scale, Naruto said, but while you are right, you are still very wrong, hatred exists because people exist, but wars are perpetuated when there are people like Hanzo, Danzo, and you. Nagato was offended by this. I am not like those two, he exclaimed, Hanzo is. A person responsible for the death, destruction, and misery of a number of people, Naruto interjected, you just slaughtered half the population of Konoha by yourself. However, Danzo is a a blind patriot who will do anything to achieve whatever end goal he thinks is best, Nagato's eyes widened, you did the same thing, but not for your country, but for your friends. Naruto exhaled a sigh. You say you'll bring the world peace through justice, but then you say you want it to feel pain, Naruto continued, still clutching the book, didn't you already get your justice when you killed those two Konoha ninja? Nagato, your method will never bring peace, only silence. That is why I despise you and refuse to forgive you, Nagato. Then they let us finish it, Nagato said. Sure, let's do it. Before Nagato could react, Naruto's other hand shot out, causing a stiff wind to pick up and swirl around Conan and Nagato. Conan was lifted off the floor by the wind. Nagato attempted to retaliate by firing one of his black spikes, but it was deflected by the wind. He would have tried something else, but due to the close proximity, he would have inadvertently injured Conan. She wasn't just a lifeless corpse controlled by his chakra. She was the last person on the planet who was close to him. However, he began to hear Conan's gasping sounds. When he turned to face her, he noticed she was having trouble breathing. What exactly are you doing? Leave her alone. This is between you and me, Payne exclaimed, she has nothing to do with it. Old man Tucci and Ayame Ne Chan didn't either, they weren't even ninjas, just simple people selling ramen for a living, 
Gara had nothing to do with this, nor did the other Jinshuriki that your group captured and murdered for this insane plan. They had nothing to do with this, in fact, unlike you, who had a choice, none of us Jinchuriki had that choice, and you made our lives miserable by hunting us, we know what it's like to suffer a fate that isn't your fault. We just didn't expect to die such a tortious death as well, Naruto countered, dangerously icy, and don't make me laugh. I highly doubt it has anything to do with this. Leave her alone. Nagato demanded as he noticed her eyes fluttering close. What's the point? You should thank me. This woman is obviously the last person you care about, and if she dies, your pain will increase and you will be even more powerful, Naruto said. You Cretan, pain snarled. If you hurt her, oh. Well. However, before he could finish his statement, the cyclone of wind that had surrounded the two vanished, allowing Conan to fall to the floor and gasp for air. I could have easily killed you both. All I had to do was use chakra in the wind, and you'd be cut to pieces. Your lives were mine from the moment I stepped into this room, Naruto stated. What? Why didn't you? Nagato inquired, perplexed. What would that achieve? It would not resurrect old man Tucci or Ayame ne Chan. It is like my other master said, you cannot fish in a sea of blood and oil, so even if you were torn apart in the most gruesome of ways and your pieces scattered to the winds, the pain of their loss would still be there, he said, looking at the book in his hand. The pervy sage also had faith in me. So, my response is that I will believe in what he believed in. I will not murder you or your friend. Is that your final response? To trust what Jiraiya Sensei said? You're telling us to sit around and wait for you to bring world peace? To hell with it. Payne yelled angrily, not knowing whether it was because he had been spared by an enemy or because he had been so nearly killed by that same enemy. Do you think I could trust Jiraiya now? There can never be peace. There will never be as long as we live in this cursed world. Naruto did nothing, only blinking every now and then, unfazed by Pain's heated denial. I will lift that curse, Naruto said calmly, and if there is any kind of peace, I will grab it and never let go. I refuse to give up. Nagato exclaimed, as if struck from behind. Conan approached him, her eyes filled with concern as she inquired about his sudden distress. Those words. I, he says. Nagato tried to form words, but all thought fled him for some reason. Yes, they're from this book, the first novel by the old pervert. He wanted to change the world through his writing, Naruto explained as he opened the book and turned to the last page, and on the last page, he thanks a certain student for providing him with the inspiration he needed to get started. Nagato, that was you. He was struck once more. It can't be, he desperately tried to deny his own words from his youth, as if they were his own younger self returning from the past, it must be some coincidence. And the main character's name is Naruto, Naruto continued. Nagato's pupils dilated. My name is one of his gifts to me. If I quit now, I will disgrace him and everything he has given me, Naruto smiled, but not just him. I have lost another master, and if I succumb to the pain of loss, I will be unfit to lead my people. Who are your people? Conan inquired. She noticed that he was not wearing a Konoha Hitai ITE, but rather one with a different design. Where they came from was only important in locating them in the middle of a fight, especially those between Akatsuki and the Jinchuriki. Aside from that, there was no reason to ever look at someone's Hitai ITE. It could even be fatal in the short term. So it was with some surprise that it was discovered that Naruto was not wearing a Konoha Hitai ITE. Yes, I am no longer a Konoha Shinobi. I am the leader of my own hidden village, Arashigakure no Sado, both of their eyes widened, having heard rumors and tales about the new village. That implies. 
Yes, I am Arashigakir no Sado's Shodai Kanshisha. Why are you telling me all of this? Why are you saying you will not give up? Nagato wondered, do you have any idea how much pain you will face? Could you trust yourself that much to not change? And while I don't have my master's talent for writing, I can say this, I am one of the nine people who understand the truth of pain, I have no choice but to follow this path, it was set towards me by both my masters, Naruto said smoothly. So, no matter how painful it is, I will walk this path without regret. Naruto is all about this. If I can't trust myself not to change, having a friend would be useful. That appeared to be the straw that broke the camel's back, because as Nagato's eyes widened, he remembered all the times he had with Jiraiya. His unwavering conviction in the time when he, too, was full of hope for the future. A future of peace. I was his student before you. I meant sarcasm when I said we should understand each other because we had the same master. Naruto didn't seem surprised, and Nagato noticed it, saying, you are a strange man. If the expression on Conan's face was any indication, this was the happiest moment of her life. She appeared to be someone who had just met a long-lost friend. She thought she'd never see her friend again. I couldn't muster the courage to believe in Jiraiya. Or myself, he admitted, his voice tinged with shame. But you. You are different. I see a glimmer of a new future in you. I see now that you had your answer a long time ago, and that despite everything I did, the way you fought was entirely without malice. Naruto couldn't stop himself from smiling, confirming Nagato's suspicions. He then began to pull his hand out of a cylindrical tube that was connected to whatever he was in. When his hand emerged, it was completely covered in the same black spikes that adorned the faces and bodies of the six paths, from the elbow to the wrists. He made the ram seal with his hand. Despite the words, Gedu Rinne Tensai no Jutsu, Naruto tensed. No, Nagato. Conan exclaimed when she noticed the technique he was employing. It's okay, Conan, he said gently, smiling, I've chosen a new option, one we gave up on a long time ago. What is the purpose of this technique? Naruto inquired. The Rinnegan gives its user power over all six of the unique pain techniques. Powers that exist outside of the worlds of the living and the dead, she continued, sighing, and Nagato acts as the seventh path of pain, his eye techniques giving him power over life and death itself, the heretic's path. I see, Naruto replied. No, you don't, Conan admitted, there's a chance he doesn't have enough chakra. He has to believe in this kid. Naruto exclaimed the slug on Naruto's shoulder, the villagers who were killed are being resurrected. I see, Naruto said, looking at Nagato. The technique ended after a short time, leaving Nagato more exhausted than he had ever been. When Conan saw this, she screamed in agony. She dashed towards him and yanked him from the thing Tortius throne. Fearful, she checked his pulse, and after a tense second, she felt it, a pulse, weak but present. He, too, felt relieved when he saw the look on her face. He approached her and knelt next to his unconscious body. I need to get him some medical attention before it's too late, Conan said, but after what we've done here, I don't think the people of Konoha will help us. Even if he does. She trailed off knowing that even though all of the victims of the attack had been recovered, the shinobi would seek his blood. She was jolted out of her reverie when she saw Naruto place one hand over Nagato's navel and form a half seal with the other. What are you up to? She inquired. He is experiencing chakra exhaustion. With the amount of chakra he expelled during our fight, it's a surprise he's still alive. Any normal person would have died, but he's slipping into a coma, he said as he concentrated, I'm going to give him some of my chakra. Conan's pupils dilated. 
Regardless, Naruto had made it abundantly clear that he despised him. Prior to the strike against Konoha. But now he was expending a lot of chakra to save the man he despised. Was it, however, even possible? To force chakra into someone. If this were possible, chakra exhaustion could be treated at any time as long as your companions had enough to spare, but this is not the case. I see your reservations, Naruto told her, but I told you I believe what the old pervert said. But what about what you're doing? She inquired. Nagato's eyes opened and his breathing became more regular before she could stop him or say anything. How did you find out? She couldn't finish her question. Naruto let out a long sigh. I didn't actually, Naruto admitted, but I spent my life surrounded by dojutsu users, and I noticed something, it is never only in the eye, Byakugan users don't get dizzy spinning, Sharingan users are all very intelligent, and if six paths allow him to absorb chakra, then I assumed that if chakra is forced into his coils, there might not be much damage. I see, Conan said, fighting back tears, thank you, Naruto. Naruto nodded and turned to face Nagato. I don't care if you meant it as sarcasm or not, Nagato. I still want to help you find peace, he said before noticing Conan's look at Nagato. But it seems you never had to look too far for it after all, he smiled. Nagato was perplexed as Conan blushed. I've been away from my village for too long, Hanada-chan and akira Ne chan will start to worry, he said as he walked to the entrance he'd made in the makeshift tree, but I must ask you this. Please have nothing more to do with Akatsuki. If I am to believe in you, it is only fair, Nagato sighed, that from now on, I will no longer aid Akatsuki, and AIM will no longer shelter it. Conan, are you okay with that? Yes, this Akatsuki is no longer what we created, she said, her tone turning venomous, it was all corrupted by that man. Naruto raised an eyebrow in response. It appears that what Itachi had told him about the true leader of Akatsuki and the organization's dynamics was correct after all. Instead of saying anything, he simply smiled and walked away. Before you leave, Naruto-kun, there is something you should know, Nagato said after Naruto, Akatsuki will not be destroyed simply because I leave the group, there is another person. I know, Naruto said, turning back with a smile. I see. Well then, you should be cautious now, because he would have to move aggressively now that I am no longer with them, he explained, and with the last two Jinchuriki being you and the Hachibi, I fear to imagine what his next move will be. I see, thank you, Nagato, Naruto replied, then how about an alliance? A collaboration? Wouldn't that be a conflict of interest? Nagato inquired. If what you say is true, I'd like to have you fight with me and, by extension, Konoha with you. Nagato appeared to think about it before extending his hand with a smile. In that case, then. Naruto took his hand in his and shook it, both of them grinning madly at each other. Conan couldn't believe Nagato's transformation. He hadn't been like this in years, and if she looked closely, they appeared to be twins. I will accompany you until you reach AIM, and then I will return home, Naruto said, adding, I will send one of my most trusted agents to meet with you two days later. Very well, Nagato replied, but how will we identify this agent? Naruto's eyes glowed as a result. Oh, you'll figure it out. After two days. He walked slowly through the forest, taking in the scenery. He was serene and calm, but anyone who looked at him would notice the contemplative expression on his face. His mind was racing and clogged with ideas. To him, peace was not unattainable. What frustrated him was the fact that the ninja world had strayed so far from its true purpose. Ninjas not only create war, but they also create peace. They can both create and preserve entities. They had deviated from their intended path, 
only pursuing vengeance and hatred at the expense of one another. To make matters worse, the ninja, who were once invisible guardians as well as villains, were never meant to be as outspoken as they are now. He couldn't say. Maybe something was in the records. He came to a halt, realizing that difficult times were ahead of him. He had a lot of work to do and even more preparations to make. New recruits would be arriving soon, both internally and externally. He was aware that the person following him recognized him and was providing silent escort. He gave a good-natured smile of thanks to the silent figure in the shadow of the leaves before performing a few hand seals. The wind gathered around him and swirled around his body in such a way that it appeared to erase him from existence. He knew it wasn't a shunshin, that it was different from that jutsu. The follower did not panic because there were only a few people who could travel this forest on such a straight path and never be affected by the genjutsu barrier, and only one of those had whisker marks. He reappeared in front of his office, which was housed in the main building. He walked in calmly, with a contemplative yet determined expression on his face. Those who saw him bowed in respect, while others smiled and called out to him, wishing him well. His assistant bowed graciously to him as he approached his office. Welcome back, Naruto-sama, she said, and I hope everything went well in Konoha. Naruto nodded and motioned for her to join him in his office. Holding at level zero. Itachi sat up straighter. You sense it too, Fuma Danjo, his companion, said, shall we then? H.N. They both left after that. In a candy shop. Shigur sat cross-legged in front of the table, holding a large bowl of candy. She was truly a child at heart. Perhaps it was her upbringing at the hands of the Arashi spymaster, Kagemusha Jin, when he hid her, perhaps it was the isolation that resulted, or perhaps it was just part of the quirk that most, if not all, elite ninja develop at some point in their lives, whatever it was. It didn't make a difference. Koko-chan, she exclaimed to her red panda, Naruto-sama is back, let's bring him some ice cream. After finishing what appeared to be a cup of ice cream, the animal bounded towards her. Shigur picked up the creature and another bowl of ice cream, then vanished, surprising everyone around her. She was a true ninja. Returning to Naruto's office. Six streaks appeared as Naruto walked into his office. They were Subaki, Itachi, Danjo, Shigur, Tanoko, and Kanta from the Juryu. They both bowed. Welcome back, Naruto-sama, Koko-chan misses you, Shigur said, holding out the panda to Naruto, who smiled as he took it into his arms. Nice to see you as well, Koko-chan. Is that for me? He stated, taking the offered ice cream before realizing there were only six, what happened to the rest? I believe Mira-san and Riku-san will not return for another two days, but Riku and Jin-san should return tomorrow, Itachi said, Kanshisha-sama, there is much you should know. My assistant has already informed me about the Konoha shinobi and the attack. Hanada handled that, right? Good, then Subaki and Itachi will accompany me while I test the new recruits, they nodded. Will you be testing personally? Kanta inquired. Perhaps, he said, but... What is it, Naruto-sama? Tanoko inquired. A lot has happened, and I'm afraid dark times are ahead for all of us. That's so terrifying, Shigur sighed. What about the rest of us, Naruto-sama? The Akatsuki have gone too far, and it is time to put an end to them. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you. See you all in my next video.